Hi, I'm Tiffany. Today, I'm going to show you how to solve for prime factorization. Prime factorization. Prime factorization is the process of finding all prime numbers for any number. A prime number is a number that only has one and itself as a factor. For example, the number 11. Okay, uh, remember factors? Factors are the numbers that you can multiply together to get that number. So what I'm saying here is 11 is prime because the only two numbers that you can multiply together to get 11 are 1 and 11. So 1 in itself. So a prime number is a number that only has 1 in itself as a factor. A composite number is a number that has more numbers than just one in itself as a factor. For example, 10. With the number 10, I could multiply 1 times 10 to get 10, but I could also multiply 2 times 5 to get 10. So it has another set of factors besides just one in itself. Let me show you how to find the prime factorization of a number with example number 1. Example number 1. I have the number 20. What I prefer to use for prime factorization is what is commonly called the factor tree. The factor tree looks something like this. You start with your number at the top and you draw two lines down and you write down two numbers that can be multiplied together to get the original number and that is let's try 4 times 5. Now you look at your numbers that you wrote down and if any of the numbers can be broken down, you break them down. And what do I mean by breaking down? I mean, are there any numbers that you can multiply together to get that number? So for 4, there are some numbers that we can multiply together. They are 2 and 2. So I'm going to write that out as 2 times 2. The 2 cannot be broken down and the 5 cannot be broken down because they are prime, meaning the only two numbers that you can multiply together to get those numbers are 1 in itself. Only 1 times 2 gives you 2, only 1 times 2 gives you 2, and only 1 times 5 gives you 5. So you can't break those down anymore. Once I get to a prime number, I prefer to circle my number to let me know that that section of the tree has ended like I can't branch off anymore on that tree. So the prime factors of 20 would look something like this. 2 times 2 times 5. So if I were to multiply these three numbers together I would get 20. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 5 is 20. You may be wondering well, I didn't think of 4 times 5 when I originally wanted to break 20 down. I thought of 2 and 10. Would I still get the same answer? Yes, you would. In fact, let me solve breaking it down using 2 times 10. And you'll see that you get the same answer. We have 2. And we multiply that by 10. That would give us 20. This would be 2 times 5. Okay, remember, once we get to prime numbers, I like to circle them. So this 2 is prime. I can't break it down anymore. So obviously this 2 is prime. And then a 5. If you notice, we end up circling the same numbers at the end of our tree, no matter which way you initially start breaking it down. That means we're going to have the same numbers here to multiply together. We have 2 times 2 times 5 here. And we have 2 times 2 times 5 here. We're going to get the same answers no matter what, as long as you are using numbers that do really multiply to get your numbers, okay? So it does not matter which combination you use. Don't feel like, oh, I'm going to start with the wrong one because you can't do that. Let's move on to example number two. Example number two, 36. Two numbers that multiply together to get 36 are 6 times 6. So I'm going to multiply 6 times 6. Now, 2 times 3 gives me 6 times 6. So I'm going to write that in. My 2 is prime, so I'm going to go ahead and circle it to let me know that I can't branch off anymore here. The 3 is also prime, so I'm going to circle it. Now, because we're dealing with the 6 again, really, 
we're going to have the same numbers coming off. So we have 2 again times 3. And again, I'm going to circle. Now, I need to list these numbers in order from least to greatest with multiplication signs between them. I have 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. So, I always grab my numbers in order from least to greatest. It makes it easier when you're looking at the prime factorization. You can quickly see, oh, I have two twos, I have three threes. And that is helpful when you get into things like solving for the greatest common factor or the least common multiple. It's going to be really important for you to have these in order from least to greatest. It really helps you out. And don't forget, if you had another set of factors in mind to break down 36, you would have ended up with the same answer as long as you did everything correctly. You could have chosen 3 times 12, and that would have been fine, or 2 times 18, and that would have been fine. All would have ended with 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. Let's move on to example number 3. Example number 3, we have the number 17. 17 is a prime number, so 17 cannot be broken down anymore. All I can do here is write prime. The only two numbers that can be multiplied together to get 17 are 1 and 17. That means I can't break it down anymore because we do not allow 1's in the factor tree. You cannot ever use a 1 in the factor tree. 17 is prime, so there's nothing that we can do here. Let's move on to example number four. Example number four, we have 81. 81 can be broken down into nine times nine. And the nines can be broken down into three times three. Three is a prime number, so I can circle all of these to let me know that I can't branch any more off of these. Nothing can be multiplied together to get three except for one and three, and we don't put any ones on our factor tree. So the prime factorization of 81 is three times three times three times three. That's my last example. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to click like, then head over to supereasymath.com for more math tutorials, printable video notes, worksheets, and more.